Welcome everybody, my name is uh, Mario Passoni and I'm the scientific officer and coordinator of the conservation awareness uh, project at the WSO, the World Sustainability Organization. So let me share the screen with you before we officially start. Okay, so I really hope you will all see my screen. Okay, so just a few uh, rules to be followed and some information for uh, you before we start the, the webinar. Please write and send your question from the question area on the left bar. Answers will be provided at the end. Please uh, use this area only for questions uh, and unanswered questions for time or technical reasons uh, will be answered via email. Uh, due to a high number of participants, only speakers can use via audio. Then don't worry, a recording and a PowerPoint presentation will be sent via email link to you, and it will be available on our web, uh, website at the link that is uh, written here in this slide. Okay, so today is uh, uh, the very first webinar about uh, a conservation awareness project of uh, 2022. Uh, today we are going, the title of the webinar is a Frog Conservation Status and Friend of the Earth Programs, Case Study, the Endangering Titicaca Water Frog. Uh, as said, my name is Mario Passoni, I'm working for uh, Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth. And uh, our guest uh, is uh, Dennis uh, Javier, who is a Balcon, uh, but is a biologist from CERFOR uh, in Peru. Um, just before we start, uh, a, re a quick reminder, the next webinar will be uh, next month in April, the date has to be confirmed yet, and will be about uh, BATS, Status and Conservation Initiatives. Okay, so um, the World Sustainability Organization is an international uh, organization uh, which deals with uh, the uh, conservation and preservation of the uh, uh, marine and uh, eco uh, terrestrial ecosystems. Um, to the WSO uh, belong two projects. The first one is Friend of the Sea, uh, that was born in 2008. And uh, this project is about the certification of products from sustainable fishes and aquaculture. The other project is called Friend of the Earth and is similar to Friend of the Sea, but uh, is uh, it deals with certification of products from sustainable agriculture and farming. Uh, connected to our society, there is uh, Dolphin Safe, that is a, a, a label, an eco label, that guarantees that uh, no uh, dolphins are uh, killed or hunted during the um, fishing activities of tuna. Uh, over 1,000 companies from more than 1,100 countries worldwide are certified with us. And then in the last uh, few months, uh, we have developed a series of uh, different uh, conservation awareness projects. In total are 29, divided for uh, Friend of the Sea project and Friend of the Earth project. So to the Friend of the Sea project belong, for example, the one about uh, Albatross, penguins, sea turtles, sharks, sea horses, and so on. Uh, at the moment, the uh, most active project that we have uh, is the one about uh, uh, ways, save the ways, uh, and that concern with uh, to avoid and to reduce the way ship strike in our sea and oceans. Then we have some other projects for Friend of the Earth. For example, the uh, one uh, about frogs that we are talking today about uh, belongs, of course, to the Friend of the Earth project. Then we have a, a very active project, uh, an interesting project uh, that is about butterflies. Uh, basically, has been created uh, by, by us uh, a census, a global census of butterflies. And uh, if you want to join us, uh, you can. Uh, Go on our website, have a look, and you can send uh, pictures and video of butterflies. And our super expert, uh, Clarissa Puccioni, will be able to identify the butterfly and let you know the name of a species. 
Um, then we have another uh, incredible project in Madagascar, uh, developed all, always thanks to uh, Clarissa Puccioni, that is about primates and especially about lemurs in uh, Nozibe, in the north of Madagascar, in collaboration with the University of Turin. Basically, it's a study about the conservation and uh, uh, population of uh, the Indri Indri lemurs in the uh, center of Ma uh, Nozibe in Madagascar. So, uh, just to let you know, we are uh, carrying out and developing all these projects. And in the next uh, months, uh, um, we will uh, expand uh, all these projects. Um, so, keep, uh, keep posted. And uh, in the next months, we will arrange also new webinars about them. But let's start to talk about uh, the subject of today. So today we are going to talk about the Titicaca uh, water frog from Peru. Uh, before we focus, uh, we are going to focus on, uh, on the Titicaca water frog. I would love to introduce you to the ecology and biology of the frogs. So just to let you better understand, uh, there are 6,343 species around the world of uh, frogs, of which 905 only in South America. Frogs are amphibians uh, and they belong to the order Anura. Anura basically means uh, that they are without the tail. Their diet can vary. Uh, the adults uh, generally have a carnivorous diet consisting of uh, small invertebrates, but omnivorous species, uh, omniv omnivorous means that they can eat uh, both uh, vegetables and uh, uh, animals. So I was saying, uh, but omnivorous species exist uh, and a few of, uh, feed on plant matter. The skin, the skin is very particular. Uh, they have a glandular skin with a secretion that could be toxic. Uh, basically, the skin of the frogs uh, are, uh, is covered by uh, some mucus. And this mucus is, is very helpful for, um, for different aspects. For example, the, the frog can absorb oxygen from the mucus and on, not only from the, from the lunge. But uh, the mucus can be also um, a way to defend uh, the frogs. Uh, in fact, some of them can be toxic. I, I've, I've put here an example or a, of a very particular frog that is called uh, arrow frog. Uh, basically, there are many of uh, <laughs> species of arrow frogs, and uh, all of them are living uh, in the Amazon forest in South America. So, as you can see from this picture, they are very colorful. Okay, so they are easy to be spotted and found. Uh, quite easy, I would say, <laughs> to be spotted and found uh, into the forest, and especially by the predator predators. Uh, but this uh, um, amazing uh, color um, is a message, is a warning message to the predator. Basically, the frog is, is, is trying to say that, okay, predator, you can see me. I'm easy to be uh, eaten, but you have to know that I'm so colorful because I'm venomous. So be careful. And this is something that the predators... Uh, uh, among the time, uh, they have understood. So they used to avoid to eat uh, uh, these kind of frogs. And uh, the name of this frog is interesting to know that it derives from the fact that the natives of the Amazon rainforest dipped the tips of their arrows with their mucus to go hunting. Just to let you understand how much dangerous can be the mucus of this frog, uh, one drop one drop of this mucus can kill up to two humans. So <laughs> it's impressive. It's quite impressive. And this frog is very small. I mean, it's uh, two, three centimeters in length. Now let's focus uh, a bit about the life cycle of the frogs. Frogs typically lay their eggs in the water. The eggs etch into aquatic larvae called uh, tadpoles that have tails and internal gears. So in the larva shape, they do have the tail. Once they become adult, they lost 
per tail. As you can see in this picture in the uh, number five, a frog number five. So they have a highly specialized rasping mouth uh, parts suitable for herbivorous, omnivorous, and planktivorous diets. The life cycle is completed when they metamorphose into adults. And now let's talk a bit about the Titicaca water frog. Its scientific na name is uh, Thelmatobius culeus. You have to know that uh, this frog is the biggest aquatic frog of the world. And uh, the dimension is <laughs> quite impressive uh, to be a frog. Basically, they can reach up to half meter in length. Half meter, a frog. Usually frog can be <laughs> can stay in one end, but this is half meter frog. <laughs> it's impressive, it's really impressive. Uh, their diet, uh, it's about, uh, they prefer snails, aquatic insect, tadpoles, and fish. So even fish, just because they are quite, quite huge. So they are carnivorous, uh, carnivorous in the adult uh, uh, stadium of their life. What about the habitat? Uh, as suggested uh, from the name, the Titicaca water frog is uh, entirely aquatic and can be only found in the Lake Titicaca Basin. So it's uh, across Bolivia and Peru. And including uh, rivers that flow into it uh, and smaller connected uh, with lakes such as uh, Arapa, Lagunillas uh, and uh, Sarochoca, Sarocoja. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, I'm sorry. In the Andean highlands of Bolivia and Peru, as you can see on the right from the map. So in the south of Peru and on the west border of Bolivia. What about their status? According to the UCN, the Titicaca water frog is listed, listed as endangered. And it's population is declining to, due to the different factors, for example, overexploitation, habitat degradation, and predation. So uh, the trends uh, of uh, the population is decreasing and uh, it's, um, I mean, uh, it's risking the extinction due to several problems. So let's go a little bit more in, uh, in, uh, in the details about the, the threats of this frog. The um, first one is the overexploitation. Basically, uh, some of these frogs are captured for food and medicinal, uh, medicinal products. Uh, on the right, you can uh, see a picture of uh, one soup that is made with this uh, frog. But it's not only about the soup, unfortunately, because it uh, uh, <laughs> looks like quite rude to be said, but uh, basically they make also a, a juice with uh, this frog. So mm, the problem is also that uh, for uh, here I have written that is used for medicinal products uh, uh, has been uh, considered as uh, an aphrodisiacal, uh, aphrodisiacal uh, element for food, but of course is not confirmed. So uh, it's not really um, trustable, this information, let's say. And then the problem is that is, uh, there is a, a huge illegal market of these frogs for these juice and, and uh, soups. Then uh, uh, another problem is the habitat degradation of the lake, of course, and the basin and so on. So, Basically, they do not live uh, in, the, in the center, in the middle of uh, the lake. They do live across the border in the basin, of course, of the, of the lake. So, uh, um, buildings and so on, and the, um, what, to, what to say, the, the human activities are uh, degrading the, uh, the local habitat, and they are disappearing, of course. Then there is another problem coming from human uh, activities again, that is predation. What does it mean, predation? The, the presumed predation of larvae by introduced trout. So basically in the last years uh, uh, have been introduced in the lake trout, 
And this uh, uh, <laughs> have got a kind of uh, negative effect uh, on the local uh, flora and fauna, and especially on uh, the frogs, because uh, as written, the trots can eat the larvae of, uh, of a Titicaca water frog. And then uh, another problem is the water extraction uh, from the lake. And to conclude, uh, domestic and agricultural water pollution. So uh, the pollution of uh, this lake uh, is creating uh, prob uh, problems and issues to this, uh, to this frog. So how, uh, what we can do in order to help this frog? We have uh, listed here uh, some possible solutions. Uh, I would say that, first of all, uh, we should avoid uh, um, to, to eat uh, the soup made with uh, the Titicaca frogs and even the juice, of course, even if it's not that much uh, simple to find these ingredients in some parts of the world. For example, in Italy, it's quite complicated, fortunately, of course. Then what is important to do is uh, to raise awareness and uh, is uh, what we are doing uh, right now with this webinar and is what we are going to do in the future uh, through uh, posts on our social uh, media channels, uh, through events, uh, activities, and so on, in order to let the people know about these problems. Then uh, what uh, is fundamental, by my point of view, uh, is law and control enforcement about uh, illegal trade. Because of course, if uh, there is a huge illegal trade, uh, you cannot manage the population of these frogs. Then uh, develop and carry out uh, uh, captive breeding programs around the Titicaca Lake. Another solution, it could be to uh, sign up our uh, petition, the Friend of the Earth petition, to request the Peruvian government and major Peruvian companies to take action and protect the Titicaca water frog from extinction. So you can go on our website. You can uh, uh, look for our conservation and awareness uh, projects uh, main page, and then uh, go on the, the campaign on frogs and then uh, there you will find the link for the petition actually we have uh, more than 10,000 signature but uh, we need more signature to be more uh, effective and concrete in order to convince uh, the Peruvian companies and so on in order to make something concrete to protect uh, the Titicaca frogs and then of course of course uh, another solution is to donate in order to support uh, conservation initiatives like ours our idea uh, is to collaborate with uh, uh, local authorities, uh, with uh, Dennis and so on, in order to uh, achieve concrete results. And of course, uh, in order to do it, uh, uh, fundings are uh, appreciated in order to, to be more effective. Okay, so this, uh, this is uh, my part. Okay, hello, Dennis. Hello. Hello, everyone. Nice, uh, nice to see you here. Just in time, perfect. So <laughs> I will transfer to you the, the control and you can share the, your screen and uh, go on with your presentation. Okay, just give me a second. Uh, okay. Yes, I, I... <clears throat> okay. I can see your, uh, your screen, your presentation. You can, uh, you can start. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kenis Wisabacon. I am a technical forest and wildlife administration in the National Forest and Wildlife Service, CERFOR. This is the authority entity in Peru about terms of forest and, and wildlife. Today I, I speak about what is the, the work we realized in the high Andes around the Lake Itaca in 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 the side of Peru. Uh, for this, uh, how we work? Uh, okay. Uh, the National Forest and Wildlife Service, uh, uh, one of 
of the function is supervise and control the use, uh, management, and exploitation of fauna and flora resources uh, to promote the sustainable use uh, of forest and wildlife resources and promote the organization and execution of forestry and wildlife control operations in coordination with another entities. Uh, for example, the Department of Environmental of, of the Police and, 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 and local communities. Uh, we work in this region. In the right side of the presentation is the map of Puno. Uh, and um, we work in the Forestry and Wildlife Technical Administration, ATFS Puno. And we work in, in all these places. Uh, Puno has 26% uh, of Amazonia, and the rest is high Andean. Uh, we share the Lake Titicaca with Bolivia. Um, and uh, Puno region is in the border line with Bolivia. Alias, uh, we work with, with local authorities and non government governmental organizations, NGO, academic entities, like uh, universities or technical centers and, and society. Uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for a uh, research with uh, academic entities of Puno region, uh, environmental education programs, a rural population involved in the conservation of the Titicaca water block, and involve the urban population to file uh, complaints uh, to protect and preserve the species for the future and identify sites to prioritize efforts. This is uh, looking for in the ATFS of Puno. In, in will work, uh, we, we identify four places where the Titicaca water flow is sold. For example, the first and the, and the most trafficked is this species is in Juliaca. Second is Puno, and third is Ilave, and fourth is Desaguadero. Desaguadero is in the border with Bolivia. And, and we suspect uh, the species across this line border from Bolivia to Peru and Peru to Bolivia. Because it's only a, a suspect, but the traffic in this place is very high level. Next, uh, we identify four places where it is extracted. Uh, this is the Lake Titicaca, <clears throat> and the first two places are in, in, in Peru region, and, and to last is in the border uh, of frontier with Bolivia. Uh, the first is Scagliani, second Capachica, third is Tinicachi, and fourth Desaguadero. Tinicachi and Desaguadero are in the border with Bolivia. Okay, uh, the UN the UN red list. Uh, uh, in your communication personal with Ramos in 2018, uh, they mentioned the place of distribution not confirmed for uh, Laguna Alonso, but the ATFFS of Puno uh, confirmed this distribution in the photography. We manipulated a, spe a specimen, a one specimen, um, um, his me his measurements are very very large, approximately uh, nineteen no one hundred and ninety millimeters. This place is Lagoon Ululunasa near a of a rural Lagunillas community, an approximate distance of the sixty linear kilometers from Lake Titicaca. Uh, some data of confiscated frogs. 
the trend is increasing uh, according to the data. Uh, in the in the 2015, only 1,114 species are confiscated in Puno region. In 2016, uh, only 60, uh, 630 species are confiscated. And in the, in the pandemic, are increased the confiscated crops. Uh, the number of species confiscated are one, 1,393 species confiscated. And, we, and the trend is increasing. How we transportation these species for the traffic? Um, in plastic bags, buckets, wooden boxes, carton box, and aquariums. This is the personal of ATFFS of Puno region and uh, work, uh, for example, in, the, in one picture, in the second, uh, for example, uh, the one person are selling a, a juice. Hmm. Environmental education. In the Saguadero, in the Saguero, we work with the with the schools. Uh, we talk about the regulation with the people in the markets and uh, and uh, training uh, a local authorities. For example, in, in the in the under image, uh, we talk about the regulation to the uh, municipal police because they are the support in the uh, in the um, they are the support when we are uh, doing operations about reducing the traffic of, of these species in the Puno region. Uh, another place we identify uh, for doing this environmental education is Escalani, Yapura, and Capachica. We work uh, since uh, 20 uh, 20 uh, 2019 we identify these places and we work with the schools with the schools and we work with the community uh, uh, the students are playing games uh, and uh, training to the local authorities too in this place the people extract rocks from the lake to the caca and promises also this place needs efforts, the part of the government and, and another areas. In the Lagunillas, in the Lagunillas, uh, we work uh, about one this form of conservation places. The name is a uh, fragile ecosystem. Uh, this uh, this work is in process and, and it's a very large process. It's similar to natural protected area, but it's very difficult because we need uh, we need work with the local people and uh, sometimes the people are not comfortable with with uh, with all ideas. And in this place, we identify uh, research about the populations of Titicaca water flow in this place is need. We confirm this place, but uh, the academic uh, need before uh, this uh, this role of investigation in this place. Coming soon, uh, we work at uh, the National Plan for the Conservation of the Water Higan Frog and the Chichitaca Grid in Peru, Bolivia. Some some uh, some meetings are <coughs> are training the uh, between Peru government and Bolivian government and work in, in this binational plan. 
for the conservation of these two species because uh, they are uh, endemic, only live in the Titicaca, in the Titicaca Lake. And this is all uh, about uh, we work in, in this high annual place. Um, I finish it with, with this with these words. Uh, I think I have found the missing link between the animal and Homo sapiens. It is asked uh, by Conrad Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you very much. So before we start the part uh, about the question and answer, I'm going to start uh, a poll. So you, you can answer, and then we can uh, find out together with uh, Dennis what is, uh, what is the result of this poll. What is the poll is about? What is the main threat for the Titicaca frog? Pollution, predation, or illegal trade? I think it's the pollution. The falls near to the lake Titicaca are, uh, the urban places are, are draw and deposit his uh, his waters to the lake Titicaca. And Titicaca Basin is a uh, closet. Don't have uh, any 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 water out. Only the Saguadero River and mm. all rivers uh, finally uh, finally finish it in the in the Titicaca. In the high altitude of Titicaca Basin uh, in the Ponyo region are some mining activities. Mining activities. And the pollution oh. is the most. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> from the answers, uh, uh, we have, uh, yeah, let me see the results. Yeah. Someone uh, uh, went for pollution, maybe after your answer. <laughs> I don't know. No, just joking. Okay. But most of the people uh, was uh, um, thinking about the illegal trade. This is uh, interesting to know it, uh, but and this, your uh, answer uh, was very interesting. So let's see together uh, some questions. Okay. So um, what is in av on average of a lifespan of a Titicaca water frog. How old can they get? How old is the species? Yeah, I, I mean, yes, can be 10, 20 years old. Uh, do you know? Uh, I don't know, but in the Ululu NASA, uh, we okay. confirmed this, uh, this, this place of distribution. Uh, we we captured a, a species uh, 190 millimeters. It's very big. Wow. <laughs> but I, but we don't know what, uh, how old is this species. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, big, very big, impressive. Yes. Okay. So another answer, a uh, question, sorry. Uh, what is the most difficult part of your job? Hmm. Your job? Or of your job. What, what is the most difficult part of your job? Ah, um, how, a, how a public server, the most, the most difficult is the, the, the money for doing uh, another things, for example, education, or is the or implementation of program or rescue um, and two is the the personal the lack of personal because we are is the Puno region is very big half part of Amazonian and high uh, high Andean and we are only a uh, nineteen technical and it's very very a small group for work because mm -hmm. not only the Titicaca water frog we view all all the species vicuña the Titicaca crepe and um, we need involve the the social the academic 
and the end geo for we doing a, a better work for conservation. This is the most difficult. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. That's why uh, WSO and friend of yours want want to to help you. We would like uh, in the next uh, weeks and months to raise funds for your project and uh, to hire people or, uh, or uh, for what is needed, of course, yes, because it's uh, fundamental to be present in the field and do something concrete. But if there is no personal, it's difficult, really. Okay, so uh, I, there are not any more questions. Anyway, for our, uh, our followers, uh, um, if you want to, in a in different moment, if you are thinking about some questions and if you want to know more about it, you can write us and uh, we will be welcome and glad to, to answer to all your questions. Uh, and then we will send you uh, the video of this webinar will be available on our website. So, Mr. Dennis, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Hope you. to get in touch with you very soon again and to develop something together. Thank you and sorry for not my very well English. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Subscribe to our channel to get more content about sustainability.